Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard. And today, yes, today was the Disney shareholder meeting, but today was also a project, uh, Disney Ford, Disneyland Ford webinar that provided uh, Disneyland representative representatives provided an update on the Disneyland Ford initiative. And I want to take you through some of the highlights of this initiative right here. This is thanks to NatLaughingPlace.com that uh, was there. They listened to the webinar and they wrote down some awesome notes. So that's going to go through. Let's go through some of these cool tidbits of information we learned about the Disneyland, Disneyland Forward project. And this is again the first in a series of uh, meetings, re- webinars, and town halls that we'll have on the project. So I've, every few months we'll get a nice update on how the planning process is working because this is exactly this is exactly how the planning process works for anything else. Um, uh, new buildings, new parks. This is how the city planning process works, so it's awesome to be able to do this with a major uh, project expansion expansion like Disneyland Ford. So, started at 11 a.m., say good morning. Todd Emmett, the CEO of the Anaheim Chamber of Commerce, was there. He said the presentation was in two parts. The first part was going to be the Anaheim Convention Center, which we'll kind of skip. Then Disneyland Ford. Uh, little tidbit, Orange County will move into the... Uh, the yellow chair most likely on Wednesday, May 19th, which is next week, about six days from now. Um, and California, again, will be moving towards normal operation June 15th. For anyone visiting out-of-state Disneyland, they can visit out-of-state the Disneyland Resort on June 15th. Let's see. Let's skip up to... All right, Disneyland, right here. So... Disneyland Ford basically is you know, like a specific plan, and a specific plan is like a general plan, but for just a specific area. So it's a master plan, basically, and that's why it's a multi-year planning process. Nothing, no major thing. Well, uh, that's not entirely true, but um, there's no theme park expansion outside of the current limits. Will start soon, I should say, because. The Eastern Gateway project that can start potentially pretty soon because that is already approved, and we'll have an update on that actually later on in this webinar. So, Disneyland Board is a multi year process. This agreement is for the next 40 years, so it's almost like the agreement, the master plan agreement they made in the 90s, but it's like ext- extending that and enhancing that. Um, let's see. Again, they're reviewing the creation of the Anaheim Resort District in 1993 to prepare. For the opening of California Adventure, It'd be just like that. Um, again, this is a master plan, a blueprint for the uh, again, like I said, the rules of the road for the future. Only fifty percent of approved theme park space has been used thus far, which is crazy. That means I think that the resort right now could grow um, by fifty percent because this is just a approved theme park space. The um, the other part has not been approved yet, which is crazy. Um, theme parks, hotels, and experiences are blending together, as you can see. And other parks like Epic Universe, uh, Universal Studios, and in Florida, their hotel will be integrated into the theme park. And California Adventure, Grand Cali has a special entrance into the theme park as well. Once again, Disneyland Ford did not seek any public funding, unlike the 1993 version, which had, uh, had public funding for the parking garage in the on ramp. They expect the planning process to take two years, which seems on par for this type of project, which is actually not too bad. It's 2023. That's not too long um, at all. And this is how, what the next steps are. So the next steps are public scoping sessions. This is where those meetings come in. You'll have lots of meetings, usually about six or so meetings over a period of a couple months and a little different areas um, of within like a 10 mile or a certain mile radius. So go... It'll go in a separate radius for that, and you'll they ex- expect they give you renderings, they give you details about what the project is all about. Um, so that's the next step, the pub- public scoping session. I'm going to try to go to one of those, um, if not viewed virtually as well. Then the draft environmental environmental impact report is released. That will provide the D- the EIR is what we call it in planning terms, but they uh, release a um, a construction timeline. That's when you'll realize when that's when you'll probably get specifics on 
each project or different pro different phases of when this project's gonna start. Um, so that's when when the idea then the draft EIR is released. That will be a big big day. So we'll get some lots of lots of like actual kind of firm timelines there. Then we have a public comment period. Again, more meetings, and you can submit your comments online, make a call, email Disney on what you'd like to be changed or you have any concerns on the draft environment and draft report. Then you'll have the final draft ER released, and again, more firm, kind of updated timelines, construction timelines. Then planning commission hearing, city council hearing, once they approve it, boom, then individual projects can start in that thing, in the, in the Disneyland Ford. One of the things that can start, though, is the Pumba parking structure, the Eastern Gateway project, because that's already approved and already in that zone, and that may start really soon. They're already, you'll see it later, they're talking to businesses on Harbor Boulevard throughout this month and June on how they can, uh, you know, cooperate this time with making a nice parking garage on the east side there. Let's see. They may extend, again, keyword may extend Disneyland and DCA on to the west side, but they also said it could be for an immersive new theme park as well. So it could be a third theme park or expanding Disneyland or California Adventure. Again, we'll find out more of those in the final EIR, most likely, what they're going to do with that. Or maybe even afterwards, um, they might not decide to do. The east side of the park, which is Toy Story parking lot, is being envisioned for a new kind of Disney entertainment, which include theme park use, hotel, dining, and entertainment, which is basically um, what they said in the on the website. I decided to build a parking structure where Pumba currently stands. And Pumba, again, they're working with the businesses right now to pinch to that because that is already approved for the Eastern Gateway. So Disneyland Ford is going to include con continued investment in transportation, transit, and pedestrian safety. So maybe some more bus shuttles. At one time, there was a streetcar proposed for the area, but that fell through. So some shuttles get to around the whole resort area, which is also maybe eh, probably not a monorail extension, but shuttles. And again, Disney's already working with the hotels on Harbor Boulevard to see how they can provide access points um, to the Eastern Gateway parking structure and to the new theme parks. See, so an example of what they like to build on the west side is Fantasy Springs at Tokyo Disney Sea, which is a hotel immersed in the theme park, which is what you saw in that kind of that blue sky concept, right? You saw the Disneyland Hotel and you saw like Wakanda next to it. That's expect something like that, because that seems like where the theme park industry is going anyway, which is cool. I like that idea. Then on the east side, they want to build something that serves guests, conventions, the residents of Anaheim, which, which is like a little Disney Springs, basically. And they even listed uh, the jo Jocelyn C's Hangar Bar at Disney Springs as an example of what they want to do. It's a themed restaurant. Everyone really likes it. Um, Best Life and Beyond. And theme, Dylan from the theme park is Obsession. They went there on their last trip to Disney World. Definitely check out those videos. It's a great, a great themed area, Disney Springs, and a themed restaurant, themed bar. So expect something like that in the Toy Story lot, which would be really cool. And some of the more technical stuff, Disneyland Ford is going to use union contractors and implement a local hiring program. That's good. The city of Anaheim and restaurants, or the residents of Anaheim will be able to get a first opportunity to work there. <laughs> They'll use environments and responsible techniques. Okay, there'll be conference of workforce development program that supports Anaheim kids and the restaurants. That's good. And this is some, just some interesting tidbits. In typical years, the resort district generates $94.5 million in surplus revenue uh, for the city of Anaheim, which is amazing. That's um, what Anaheim lost. And uh, the Southern SoCal region has a lot more, lost a lot more during this shutdown period. Uh, they lost SoCal region lost by $8.5 billion in economic impact during the shutdown, which is crazy. They also do $20 million in sports to nonprofit organizations. And Disneyland, of course, is the city's largest uh, taxpayer. Once again, they're not announcing any specific projects. Um, that's why they can't, they're not talking about uh, the impact of specific construction. Uh, one of those things, one of the contents of the environmental impact report is you have to say what, um, like putting a 50-story building, you have to see how it's gonna environment <coughs> how it's gonna impact the um the surrounding area, but they can't do that because they didn't announce any specific project yet. That's again will be in the draft EIR, maybe in or the final EIR. Okay. Uh downtown Disney's not going anywhere so far, so 
if you're worried about that, don't be down. There's no specific plans to only be floating downtown Disney. Regarding when construction will start, and Disneyland says can't plan a project until they know what the rules are with, uh, and what the Disneyland Ford process is all about when it's approved in 2023, hopefully. Um, there'll be uh, traffic analysis as part of the EIR, and um, Disneyland doesn't have an answer about how capacity will change as the state guidelines evolve. Uh, June 15th, they don't, basically they don't know uh, if they're going to increase capacity on June 15th or not. And to close out, the Disneyland representative says Disneyland Ford is, gives her hope and that looks forward to being a part of the Anaheim community going forward. And that's about it. So just some quick updates on the Disneyland, on the Disneyland Ford project. I hope you're able to see me that entire time. Uh, I just realized I came back from sharing the screen. My chin was like down. But um, anyway, yeah, so that's super cool. Again, expect more Disneyland Ford updates. I'll make my own playlist for Disneyland Ford um, for any updates. Um, again, when the public scoping meeting happens and the EIR is released and all that good stuff, we get many more juicy little tiny d details. Um, and again, expect it's expected to be approved by 2023, so it won't be too long until some of these things start, um, start coming out. I mean, Next year, at the latest, will be the first EIR for sure. Maybe even the final one will come. I mean, definitely, I'd say by the fall, you expect some more, definitely some more details of the summer and fall of this year and heading into next year. But are you guys excited for Disneyland Ford? What do you expect will, um, what do you expect will, uh, what project are you most excited for? What do you think they'll build? Do you think they'll build a Disney Spring style complex on Toy Story lot? Do you think they'll build an immersive new third theme park? Or you'll, do you think they'll extend DCA in California or DCA in Disneyland onto the West Side and their respective plots? And if so, what will be your dream land to come to those areas? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys for subscribing if you are subscribed. Thank you guys for watching. Um, really appreciate all of you as we head towards 1,300 and almost 1,400 subscribers. Thank you so much. And uh, subscribe for more theme park updates. If you like this video, press that thumbs up button. And as always, have a fantastic day.